Welcome to Click. I'm Spencer Kelly. Imagine, if you will, a phone directory listing places where you can get knocked off goods without paying for them. Well, one website doing just that has rather quickly attracted quite a bit of attention. The dodgy goods are pirated films, copied software, shared songs, you name it. The site is the Pirate Bay, and it's now public enemy number one for copyright holders everywhere. But it's also sparked debate on whether it's people's habits or the law that needs to change. Dan Simmons sets sail for Sweden in search of pirates. These computers keep the pirates in touch. The Pirate Bay website is one of the most popular worldwide, listing thousands of songs, films and software titles for sharing. In most countries, it's illegal to swap copyrighted material, but the Pirate Bay is essentially a search engine. It doesn't host any of the content, so it's not fallen foul of Swedish law. Yet. That hasn't stopped the authorities from trying to shut it down. Last year, police raided the building and seized the servers. What the authorities didn't expect were the public protests that followed. It was in this square where those protests took place in favour of Pirate Bay and in the shadow of Sweden's parliament. What many of those protesters were angry about was the US film industry telling their parliament what to do because they believed that senior US politicians basically forced this government to shut the Pirate Bay down even though the Pirate Bay wasn't doing anything illegal under Swedish law and that really sparked public debate. In an election year, file sharing became a mainstream issue with a dedicated political party that quickly became Sweden's third largest outside of parliament. You could argue that this is stealing. The point is, it doesn't matter. If you are to enforce copyright in the digital age, where a lot of this takes place in private communications, if you are to enforce that, you need to monitor all private communications. And that's not worth it to society or politically. Like the resurrection of Pirate Bay itself, three days after it was shut down, Sweden's pirates say they can't be stopped. After the police raids, the Pirate Bay moved many of its servers abroad. They say they don't even know where they are. It's part of the cat and mouse game that they play with police. But at least one server stayed in Sweden, and it's in the vaults of this bank, where they hope it'll remain safe. A short walk away is where one of the copyright industry's most wanted lives. Frederick and Peter make up half the Pirate Bay team. Their weapons are standard laptops, hardwired to the net. They don't trust wireless connections. Yeah, you go first. Frederick, I'm the king of Pirate Bay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, the tech guy. I do all the technical stuff, uh, the server maintenance, the upgrading uh, the hardware. I'm Peter and I do press and I do uh, media contacts and language stuff and some programming on Pirate Bay. The users are not tech geeks. They are regular users. Is that your aim? We really didn't aim at all. At the first the site was just in Swedish. Uh, and after a while we realized that, hey, 80% of our visitors are foreign. Yeah, I think it's uh, okay to copy. And uh, they get their uh, money from so many places that the sales is just one small part. Like, uh, take the latest Bond movie. What car was it? Oh, it's a BMW. His phone is a Sony Ericsson. I don't think that's a coincidence. I think they got a lot of money for having the, those products in the movie. Peter, what about yourself? Do you morally feel obliged to pay something towards the production. No, but I, I do, I do pay for it by, you know, by listening to music, by making someone, you know, bring the music to my friends, they bring it to their friends and they go to concerts, I go to concerts. You know, just the actual product doesn't have to cost anything in order to make money. Unsurprisingly, that's not the view shared by the entertainment industry. It's just not practical to give away 
a, a creation for free. There's there's people that have people that need to be paid, people that need their wages paid, who have worked on those recordings, uh, and and copyright is the mechanism and the law to make sure that that investment is rewarded, uh, and therefore that there'll be more money to to foster new artists, bring new content to the public, uh, and that's that's how it works. For those not persuaded, legal action awaits. This is the man accused of running the UK music sharing service, Oink. The popular TV link site has also been closed down. Wins too for the industry in France, where the president is pressing for file sharers to be tracked and disconnected should they persist. We don't want the Pirate Bay to continue to operate in its current form just simply because of the damage that it's causing. Uh, there is a Swedish criminal action underway. We'll see what happens in the criminal trial in Sweden next year. Uh, hopefully that will lead to the closure of, of Pirate Bay, but that, that remains to be seen. Choppy waters may lie ahead for the pirates, but at least one national newspaper reporter thinks there's little appetite here to start changing laws just to close down the site. In Sweden, surprisingly many people have been file sharing. Uh, and it's not only young people. Obviously, maybe over a million, maybe two million people have been file sharing. The politicians haven't solved the problem. Uh, that's why I think the whole issue is put on hold. They don't know how to tackle this problem. This is as close as the Pirate Bay gets to an HQ, where those involved, their friends and sympathizers, come together. Posters advertise forums and debates on file sharing. Frederick, do you actually use Pirate Bay yourself? Uh, yes, I do. I download television series. Yeah, I download everything from Pirate Bay. <laughs> you know, applications and movies and TV shows and music, whatever. And is that legal? I don't. I don't care. <laughs> That's the big thing. I don't care. I, I know. Yeah. I download it, and you know, if I want it, I take it because I can. You know, it might be moral to some people, but I think it's, you know, it's up to me to decide. Why do you think nobody's taken action against you? Why should they? I still go to the movies. I still spend money on our movies. So. Because it's illegal? Yeah, but, you know, it used to be illegal in Sweden to walk, to jaywalk. But it's not anymore because everybody did it. So. But it's still illegal? Yeah, but, you know, everybody does it, so everybody wants to download movies. So uh, the, the public opinion is it should be legal. Do you think the police then turn a blind eye to this sort of behaviour? Well, they, technically it's too hard to prove. Are there any other Swedish laws that you would break because you think you have the right well, to do speed so? Speed limits. <laughs> I think we're the same there. <laughs> we like to break the speed limit. As Swedish society ponders the way forward, Frederick is busy shoring up defences. He's working on a new system of sharing files. He says it will be faster, more reliable, make users harder to track. The open source version, he says, can't be bought up or brought down by commercial interests. They're both taking the music and film industries to court for what they claim are illegal attacks on their site. And if Pirate Bay is outlawed, they say they'll just move abroad and run it from another country. The ship, they claim, can no longer be sunk. Nobody is uh, crying that uh, people that used to go around and selling ice to people don't have a job anymore because of the fridge. It's, uh, it would be stupid. But it's, uh, it's the same thing. Technology has changed. You can't go back. There's no way to go back. And there's no... I don't think there's a will to go back. Dan Simmons with a report that I am certain will generate a huge response from you. So, are Pirate Bay and others like it making a good enough argument for change? Or should they just all be shut down? Email click at bbc.co.uk.